Hi there, I'm Claire. I'm with the Saskatoon Public Library on Treaty 6 territory in the traditional homeland of the Métis. Um, I am here to read some poems with you today. This is Maggie. She's my bud. Um, and uh, I have sort of an assortment of poems for you today. It's uh, Poetry Month, so that's why we're doing this. So, what do I have for you today? I have sort of an an assortment. Now the first one I have, because it's spring, it's very much spring, and spring is a fantastic, dirty, muddy, contemplative time, and what could be more poetry than that? So this is a poem. Uh, it's by Randy Lundy. This book, Field Notes uh, <laughs> for the Self, came out in 2020 and uh, this poem really struck me as the right poem right now. It's called Film Poem. You move the snow shovel from the front deck to the back. The bull mastiff Rita watches you wondering what you are doing. It is April and there will be no snow for some time. You know these words are marginalia not the stuff of poems. So you reimagine it from the perspective of a camera. Let's pretend there is a production crew. Let's say there is a director. Let's call the director Bergman. Let us imagine God is watching an audience of one. And there you have it, a poem. A man, a shovel, a dog watching the man and shovel, a camera's eye view, and God. You cannot have a poem without God. You have only one moment of doubt about the self, about the words it attempts to weave into something that might mean. When the man puts the shovel down on the treated spruce wood back deck, the sound is that of a hand drum, and there is singing the sound of a coyote howl. So that is Film Poem by Randy Lundy from Field Notes to the Self. Now, Randy Lundy is, uh, is a, he lives, I think, right now in Saskatchewan, from, from what I can understand. He was born in Manitoba, and uh, he's written a few other books. So... Uh, Definitely worth checking out. Field notes for the self. Uh, what I like about that poem is it is the mundane, but it does make it so beautiful. We all have to put away our winter stuff eventually. Take out the spring stuff and and how simple it is, but like a very anything well done, it's always deceivingly sim. It's just looks simple, but is not at all. The next one I have is uh, by a woman that I know from quite a few years ago. Um, she lives in BC. Her name is Karen Schlanka. And she come, has come to mind a lot lately uh, because she is not only a poet, but she is a uh, physician. And she, she's a family physician and, and uh, uh, she also teaches um, medicine. And on top of that, she's a very interesting woman. She teaches tango. So I don't think it gets more interesting than a poet, a tango instructor, and a physician. And I think COVID has been hard on a lot of, uh, a lot of people. But this poem that she writes from her book, Summock's Red Arms, uh, is about space travel which is also something that's been in the news a lot. Maybe all of us cramped at home so much makes us think of what life would be like in outer space. I don't really know. So this is called The Travelers. And it starts with a quote. Good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. And that's a quote by Frank Borman, Commander Apollo 8, radio message. And here's the poem. 
They found it surprising, he said, after coming all this way. What enchanted them most, what held their minds from trajectory corrections and flight plans, error margins, or winning a space race, was looking back at the blue earth. The rocket engine ignited briefly. Their craft dropped into the gravity well, free falling on the far side of the moon, out of radio contact with mission control over the moon's horizon. Earth rose as if for the first time. What a magical moment that must have been. Hard to, hard to picture it. Poetry helps. So the last one I have for you today is another spring poem. Um, my mom would, would say this to me. She had it memorized. I think a lot more people had more poetry memorized a while ago than we do now. Um, and it's a classic. And for me, spring is very much a, the season of childhood. So here it is, The Swing, uh, written, let's see, when was it written? It was written in 1885 by Robert Louis Stevenson. How do you like to go up in the swing? Up in the air so blue? Oh, I do think it the pleasantest thing ever a child can do. Up in the air and over the wall till I can see so wide. Rivers and trees and cattle and all over the countryside. Till I look down on the garden green, down on the roof so brown. Up in the air I go flying again. Up in the air and down. So if you haven't been on a swing for a little while, even if you're a grown-up, just go. It feels great. And a lot of new playgrounds aren't putting swings in, so take a drive around and see if you can find a swing set. So thank you for joining me today for Poetry Month, FOMO. Have a great day.